Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven. And in today's episode of the Maven Nation Photography Podcast, we're going to be talking about what I believe Fuji is cooking. A couple months ago, I did a review of the 200 f2 lens, which was <laughs> amazing. But there were a lot of questions that that lens brought to the table. And I came to the conclusion that Fuji must be developing a professional grade APS-C sports shooting camera. Many people disagreed with me. Some people said, yeah, maybe it's possible. And I have to give a shout out to Stephen Scharf, one of my viewers who sent me some links on some white papers about the development of the X-H1. Stephen, thank you so much for sharing this with me. We really owe it to him for this information to, to be brought about now in the podcast. So in the tests that I've done with the X-T3 and with the X-T30, I personally have come to the conclusion that Fuji has the best focusing systems when it comes to sh simple square shooting. When I say simple square, I'm, I'm not talking about tracking. I'm not talking about face or eye detection. I'm talking about putting a focusing square in 99% of the viewfinder and firing away at the time of this recording. Fuji's number one for mirrorless cameras, and in many instances, it will actually outperform DSLRs. The focusing systems of mirrorless cameras, there is a real hurdle in terms of how the camera gets a focus achievement because we don't have this focusing array built below the camera. There's a separate video I have coming on this hopefully shortly, but there are some real challenges, and Fuji has figured out that by putting in faster processors, they can resolve and calculate the direction of a moving subject without the need for the focusing array. Sony is right on their heels. Sony has some problems with the rack zoom focus problem, but my experience with the Fuji cameras is you can shoot just as you would with a DSLR, isolating your focusing square with a very high percentage of keepers, even rack zooming, no problem. So Fuji has already overcome a tremendous hurdle in regards to the focusing accuracy. I want to read to you some quotes from this article. The links are below. Download it, read it, because Fuji gives us some breadcrumbs about what is coming in the future. Listen to this opening paragraph. We must try our best to meet the demands of professionals. So right off the bat, when they're talking about the X-H1, they're saying we need to develop a camera that is going to fulfill something that does not exist yet. But the question we have to ask is what kind of a camera would be compelling enough for professionals to abandon their DSLR sports shooting cameras? What would need to be on the table in order for that to happen? That's kind of the angle where I'm coming from. So we see it in the X-T3 that 11 frames per second, hey, no problem. But there is a limit in that a lot of sports shooters, they want the 12 and the 14, or in the case of the Sony A9, they want more frames per second. I personally don't feel that Fuji has a camera that gets them in that range. I know what you're gonna say. What about the 20 and 30 frames per second? You know, what we see on the X-T30 and the X-T3. Those are electronic. They have problems with rolling shutter the moment you start panning. So it's hard for me to kind of classify those in professional grade 20 and 30 frames per second. I don't really put them there. And to be compelling enough for a Canon or a Nikon shooter to abandon something like the 1DX Mark II or the D5 or the upcoming D6, it has to get in that 14 frame per second range. That's kind of my thought, and there's a problem with this. It's Fuji's battery. The reason why we see these ginormous batteries in the 1DX Mark II and the D5 is because it needs the power to move the mirror in the in open and close a mechanical shutter fast enough, sustained at 14 frames per second. And in the buffer test on the 1DX Mark II, it had no problem taking a thousand shots. So the current Fuji battery is not enough if they are going into this space. We've seen things where they can add a grip and it can add extra frames per second. We saw that on the Fuji X-T2. The Fuji X-T3 can do it without the battery grip. They are so close, but I do believe it's going to be either a power solution, bigger battery, or they're going to have to redesign the sensor. It's going to have, you have to be something like the A9 that's doing full frame sensor readout that would allow for those electronic 20 or more frames per second. I, I see those as, as one of the two options. And the bigger question is the lens lineup. Fuji simply does not have the compelling lenses to get pro shooters to switch over. Yes, we have the 200 F2. Yes, it's amazing. There's the 100 to 400, but that's really it. And I see the lenses as the major 
hurdle. That is, is really where it's at because there's an optical formula that has to go into design. There's a lot of testing. It takes years to develop a good lens in a good lens lineup, telephoto primes, it's gonna take, take a lot of research and development. I think that's where the bottleneck is. So in the article, they go into great detail talking about the importance of strengthening the metal frame by 1.25X in each dimension. It makes it almost twice as strong, but they also talk about the need to keep this camera as light as possible. And this is why I'm kind of leaning away from the big battery solution. I think Fuji is developing a sports shooting camera that will do 14 or more frames per second, and it's probably going to be coming from a new sensor design, unless they wanna go with a huge battery. That's kind of the way I look at it. So there is a very important quote in this article right here. Another extra consideration was given to the mount. We're talking about how the lens connects to the body. In near future, there will be lenses that weigh more than two kilograms. So I look for little teeny details like that. They had announced the 200 F2, which is a very big, heavy lens for Fuji lenses. It's the heaviest one. It weighs over two kilograms, but they said lenses, plural. That means there are more these kinds of lenses being developed right now. Because when you look at the Fuji lens lineup, most of them weigh under a kilogram. The only thing that comes close is that Telephoto Prime, the white one. I can't off the top of my head think of any other kind of lens that would weigh over 4.4 pounds. So there is at least one more Telephoto Prime coming and there's more than likely more than that one in that is the hang up in terms of the sports shooting camera. Fuji has already come out and said, we're not going to see an X-H2 anytime soon. It's not gonna happen in 2019. In terms of innovation, Fuji is on the cutting edge, I believe with Sony. They are really leading the charge. I think Fuji's doing a tremendous job. But when I read an article like this talking about addressing the needs for professionals, and they're talking about making the mounts stronger to hold heavier lenses, and there's no other lenses out there, but that one, yeah, all indications say, it's coming. It'll probably come sometime after 2020. In any event, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of The Maven Nation, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you next time.